I talked about the node sub command, and today we're going to be talking about the desktop sub command, its options, and also the desktop selectors. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So with the desktop selectors and desktop commands, there is far less than there is for the node. So I should be able to show a couple more examples than I was previously able to because with the node video, it would have just made it way too long otherwise. So let's actually get into it straight away then. So man, a BSPC, I'll bring up another terminal over here. We'll make it a little smaller so we have a spot to do examples in. Let's go down to the desktop selectors. So if you saw the previous video on node selectors, then you would have seen this syntax before. But as I said in that video, I'm not gonna be explaining how this syntax works. The easiest way to work this out is to just actually play around with the options yourself and actually play around with the command yourself. And you won't really need to think about what this weird syntax is actually here. So let's have a look at some of these descriptors in here, then we'll go over to modifiers, then after that I will be doing commands. So the first descriptor we have in here is cycle dir. So you don't actually write out cycle dir, you write out one of the directions. So in this case, we're using next and prev. So I talked about those in the previous video, but I thought I'd mention them again here just in case you didn't see that. So what this will do is we'll select the desktop in the given direction relative to the reference desktop. So in this case, what this will do is next will be desktop two because I'm on desktop one and prev will be desktop 10. I know that it says seven up here, but I've got another three desktops on my external monitor. So it'll go across all of the desktops that it's got defined, I believe. I don't think it'll actually go to seven. So if we were to write BSPC desktop dash F next, what this will do is it'll focus on desktop two. And now in here, if we were to write BSPC dash F and then, or BSPC desktop dash F and then prev, this will then focus back to desktop one. So next up we have the any descriptor. So select the first desktop that matches the given selectors. So like with the, why did it open it up like that? That's weird, oh, I had terminal open, that's why. So like with the node selector, any will match the first node that it matches. So if you wanna match a bunch of different nodes, don't use any. So let's just try one of these out, for example. So let's go BSPC desktop any, and let's say we want to focus on it. So that should just focus on the first desktop I'm on because I didn't give it any selectors. So it'll assume that the selector that I've picked in this case is the focus selector. So like with the node, when you don't put anything in there, it just assumes that the default selector is focused. Okay, so we have a couple of other ones in here that were the same with nodes. So we have last. So this will select the previously focused desktop relative to the reference desktop. So if I go over to desktop two, so if I'm in here and we go, let's actually try that. I'm pretty sure this is how that works. BSPC desktop dash F. And then I believe that was last, yep. So if we go to last, this will then focus back to desktop one because that was the last focus desktop that we were on. And that does what we would expect. And same if we were to go with newest. So if we do newest in here, this should focus on the second desktop. No, it didn't. Okay, uh, why did that not focus on the... Oh, right, of course it's not going to because the newest desktop is the currently focused desktop. That, that makes sense. So next up we have older. So this will select the desktop older than the reference desktop in the history. So I believe this will focus in that direction like I'd expected. So we go older, yeah. So in this case, I had nodes on desktop one before I had any on desktop two. So that means that desktop one is older than desktop two. And then we also have newer. So if we were to do newer from this one, uh, let's see, we go in that order instead. Is that gonna work? No, okay. I don't know why that's failing actually. There's a couple of options and a couple of selectors in here that will fail occasionally for reasons that I'm not entirely sure about because their counterparts will work, but the other ones don't. So I'm not sure about that, but typically I don't use those anyway. I'm not sure what's actually happening there. But newer will select the desktop newer than the reference desktop in the history. So maybe that's treating 
this desktop as being newer than the other one, so it's not doing anything. I'm not sure. So next up we have focused. So as I said, focused is the default descriptor if you don't put anything in. So this will select the currently focused desktop. Then we have the nth selector. So this will select the nth desktop. If the monitor cell is given, selects the nth desktop on the selected monitor. So I'm not going to be looking at monitor selectors today, but you can combine those two together to actually get something where you say, select the first desktop on the third monitor, for example. You can do that with this selector and the monitor selectors. Now, an interesting thing about the nth selector is you don't actually need to put the caret symbol. I don't know if this is intended or anything, but you can just write the name or the number of the desktop. So in this case, I want to focus on desktop two. That will then jump me over to desktop two like you would expect. So then we can also use the desktop ID and the desktop name. So the desktop ID is the ID assigned to it by the window manager, whereas the desktop name is the name that you assign to it. So I have just assigned my numbers, but you could give them other names, like say you want to have programming, browser, file manager, things like that. You don't have to give them numbered names. It's just easier to switch between them when they do have numbered names. So now let's have a look at the desktop modifiers. So what a modifier is, is basically you take one of these descriptors in here. So let's say we want to use any. So let's just write that out. So BSPC desktop. I've re-recorded this section like five times already because I keep slipping up over my words. Anyway, so any and then dot. So if we look at the actual syntax up here, we can see that before all of these modifiers, we have to include a dot. So we write any dot and then we can take a modifier that's in here. So let's say we want to consider only the urgent desktops, for example. So the interesting thing about desktop selectors as opposed to the node selectors is that all of the descriptors for the desktops, unless I'm mistaken, only consider a single desktop. Whereas with the node selectors, the node descriptors in particular, they will potentially select multiple. So there's no reason why these modifiers actually should exist. They should probably just be descriptors because... So let's take the urgent, for example. So let's say you have like five urgent desktops. None of these descriptors in here will actually let you take all of those desktops. You actually have to go through the query syntax to be able to get all of those. So I'm not really sure what the reason that this exists is because I don't believe that with the desktop subcommand, you can just write dot and then a modifier, whereas you can with the query syntax. So let's see if we can do that actually. Yeah, no, you can't do that with the desktop subcommand. So it's a really weird way that they've structured that, but most of the time you don't really even need to consider that there are desktop modifiers. So it's probably fine to just forget about them, but it's important to know that they are there. So one thing I didn't mention is that you can actually add a exclamation mark before any of these modifiers and then get the opposite of what it means. So if we take the focused modifier, for example, so only consider the focused desktop. So if we add an exclamation mark before that, then let's just write that out just briefly. So let's just go any dot focused. So that is going to select the focused desktop. But if we want to select the desktops that aren't focused, we can use the exclamation mark. So this will say only consider the not focused desktops. So I just realized that off camera, the last command that I showed was actually cut off. So it was like this that I wrote. I don't feel like actually re-recording that section. So that's basically what I wrote. My webcam was covering it though. So not too important. You should have been able to get it from what I was saying though. So here are the desktop options or desktop commands. So the way the desktop subcommand is structured is I've showed you a couple of times already. So BSPC desktop. So that says use the desktop subcommand. Then you put in a selector, then you put in a command, but you can actually put them in either order. It's not too important which order you do it in. But if we're going to follow it like this, so any and then dot focused or focused or any dot urgent, any of those selectors that I just showed you before. And obviously you can chain together the different modifiers as well. So if you want to go any dot focus dot urgent, that's also valid. So then after that, you would enter in one of these commands. So the commands, most of them are fairly simple. A couple of them, you're probably not going to really use much, but let's have a look through anyway. So one of the ones you're probably going to care about most is focus. So this will focus the selected or given desktop. So what this will let you do is basically focus on a different desktop. So if we go BSPC desktop, 
dash F, and then let's say we want to focus on desktop two. That just jumps over to the second desktop. So that's what you use to jump between each of your different desktops. I've said desktop a bunch of times. I'm sorry for that. It's going to keep happening though. Next up, we have activate. So this one I tried to play with off camera, but it doesn't seem to do anything unless I'm just mistaken about what activate means. Cause if we run that, it just fails. And any of the selectors that I've put in, it fails on. I don't know why, but for some reason it's just always failing. So if someone knows exactly what that does, let me know, because I'm still trying to work out what activate actually means, and I haven't been able to find any documentation for it. I had assumed that it meant something similar to focus, but maybe I'm wrong there. So we also have the ability to send desktops between two given monitors. So I've got seven desktops assigned to my first monitor, and I've got another three, I think, assigned to my second monitor. So what I could do is, let's say we want to send desktop two to the external monitor. So I could use dash, or actually select the monitor first, then I could use dash M, and let's say we wanted to send it to my HDMI one. So that is my external monitor. So that is using the interface name. I'm just using that one because I haven't gone over monitor selectors yet, and that's the easiest one to actually go over. So what that would do is it would send my second desktop, so this one right here, to my external monitor. Now, a lot of the time, I don't really feel any need to do this because I've just got set desktops assigned to my external monitor and assigned to my main monitor. But if you're someone who wants to move them between them, then that's how you would go about doing that. So we can also swap desktops. So this is an interesting one. I don't use this much, but it is kind of cool. So what we can do is swap that. Actually, I think we write it the other way around. So this will swap the focus desktop with let's say desktop two. So it might not seem like anything's happened here, but if I bring up screen key, so now if I jump over to desktop two, if we look up here in polybar, that now says desktop one, because I haven't updated my polybar yet. So what's actually happened is they have physically been swapped around in the ordering. So now if I jump back to desktop one, now that's actually desktop two. So. As I said, I don't typically do this because I would also then need to refresh my polybar to make sure they've been swapped around properly. And I just want my desktops to be in a consistent order. But if you want to swap them around, then that's how you would go about doing that. So if you're watching a video like this, you probably know that BSPWM has a bunch of different layouts and two of those are monocle and focus. So with the dash L option, you can set or cycle the layout of a selected desktop. So cycle will use next and prev. So if you want to have monocle on and then you want to say toggle between the two, you could basically do BSPC desktop, then go dash L, then just set it up to do next. So if you do next and then next again, it'll go back to what you previously had. So it basically just creates a cycle or you could go prev. It doesn't really matter because there's only two options. It doesn't really matter what you use because it's gonna have the exact same result. So I don't ever switch out of tiled mode. If I need to, it's only ever to create a floating window. I'm never gonna to wanna to change everything into monocle mode. I'm not a big fan of monocle mode. I know some people like it. Personally, it's not for me though. But if you do wanna change a desktop so it's only ever in monocle mode or only ever in tiled mode, that's an option you can do there. So next up we have rename. So. As I mentioned earlier, all of my desktops are numbered, but instead, if you wanted to change them to be, as I said, like name to code, browser, file manager, things like that, you can use the rename command. Obviously, your other option is to just name them when you create them, but if you wanna name them after they've been created, this is how you'd go about doing it. Then we have bubble. So bubble works similar to swap, but instead of being able to swap with any of the desktops, it'll swap with the next desktop or the previous desktop. So if we try this one out, so if we bubble this to next, that will then switch it with the second desktop. So this has the same effect that we had before. So if I bring screen key back up momentarily, so jumping to desktop two will swap me to what it says my polybar is desktop one and swapping to desktop one will obviously swap back to what my polybar says is desktop two. So if we wanted to fix that, then we could just write prev and that will then now go back to the correct order. 
So yeah, that's basically how that functions. I don't, as I said, I don't swap, so I don't use bubble either, but if you do want to use something like that, that option is available. And lastly, we have the ability to remove a desktop. So I don't really know why you would ever want to do this, because when you create all of your desktops in your config, I would assume that those are the desktops that you want. But if for whatever reason you need to remove a desktop, then this is how you would go about doing it. So you use the dash R option. As always, you can use any of the selectors. So if you want to say, remove the focused or remove any, or any of the selectors that we had before, you can use those. So obviously you don't have to just use the focus desktop. So I think that's pretty much everything for the desktop selectors and desktop commands. So there's just two more videos left in this series. Hopefully you're enjoying it and hopefully you're getting something useful out of it. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If after I'm done you want me to do something else on BSPWM, let me know and I'll be more than happy to do it. I really like this window manager and if it's gonna help me actually do something more productive with it, I'm absolutely willing to try it out. So if you wanna see those videos when they come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help will be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you wanna see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my library. So if you wanna see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, that's the best place to go. Recently, I passed 200 subscribers over there. So I really appreciate all the help that I've been given. Down below, I've also got my Discord. So if you wanna chat with me, that's the best place to go. And also you can get video updates there. Another place to get video updates is my Twitter and my Mastodon. So pretty much all I post there is video updates. Occasionally I'll also post some other stuff that I'm doing. Mainly it's video updates. So that's the best place to go for those because YouTube can never be trusted to actually push them to anyone. So also down below I've got my support links. So if you'd like to support the channel, that's the best place to go. But obviously the videos will remain available for free. So don't feel pressured to actually support if you don't feel like doing it. And I think that's pretty much everything for me. No. One last thing. No, actually that is the last. Yeah. So I think... <laughs> so... I'm out. <laughs>